Okay, everyone, welcome back to another episode of James Makes Clothes. My name is James, and these are my hands here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make bias tape. And bias tape is available for purchase at the store. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own. So if this video and this channel appeals to you, make sure you subscribe and like this video. Feel free to comment. Make sure you notify yourself when I release new videos by hitting that notification button. So what I've done with this is I've made this shirt. Okay, this is not a shirt for me, but it's a standard button up shirt, kind of jacket idea. All I need to do is hem it. So your one option when you're sewing is to do a double fold like that and top stitch it. Now that, that could work. However, on this curve, it's pretty sharp. So it's, I'm probably gonna run into difficulty sewing it and it's not going to look as clean as what I want. So the best option for me is to do a bias tape hem. You take the bias taping, all right, and bias tape basically is folded with the edges folded under, okay? You're going to see how I make that. And we stitch one side of it on to the bottom, fold it under itself, and then do a, an edge stitch to secure the bias taping. So what that leaves us with is a nice turned up hem and around this curve is going to work great because of the bias taping. It's great for sewing around curves and we'll have sort of like a one inch thick top stitching line that runs along the hem. So it'll kind of give it more of a rugged look to this shirt. If you want to watch the video on this shirt, I did create a video sewing this together. You can also check out my video on how I do plackets such as this and Let's begin though with our bias tape demo. First you have your piece of fabric. All right. The reason why I'm making this bias tape is because I want it to be the same fabric as that. Okay. So that's why sometimes you can't just necessarily buy the bias tape or you don't want to because it doesn't come in the right color or pattern. You can make your own and that's what I'm doing here. So what you do is you take the edge of your fabric, fold it on the cross grain, okay? So it's a diagonal fold through a square, and so yeah, we're going to cut out our square, and this is gonna be what we create the bias binding from. Quilting ruler are great for this, especially bias tape because you want the sides of your tape to be nice and crisp. Cut off the selvage. You're left with a square. Basically what we're gonna do is take our quilting ruler. The bias taping is gonna be however thick we decide. We have to make sure that we incorporate some sort of seam allowance. On bias tape, standard bias tape, it's usually one quarter of an inch, okay? So you have to factor in a quarter of an inch on each side for the hem, for the fold under, and then your body. So for me, I am not folding this in half it's going to be attached as a hem. So I'm actually gonna do just a one inch bias thickness for my bias tape, okay? But you can go a little thicker if you want, but a one inch is going to work for me. I'm not folding this in half. So if I was folding this in half, I would want it a little wider. Do our one inch thickness, and we're just going to use our quilting ruler and draw our lines directly on our fabric. Okay, so working from the edge, well, I'm left-handed, so I'm working from this side, but if you're right-handed, obviously it'd be the other side. And we wanna make sure we're marking this on the correct side of the fabric. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. You use a nice fine tip marker. It doesn't really work that well if you use chalk um, because if you use a marking chalk, your line could be a little too thick and it could throw off your measurement. Um, and this would factor in really important to doing, say, like a seam binding. Um, if your seam binding isn't proper thickness all the way around, you're going to notice that when you attach it onto the seams. Now, if you're feeling brave, okay, and I also like to take shortcuts, you can just direct go in directly and cut this out. You don't need to do all this line stuff. But if you were using scissors, you would have to do the lines first. So we're just going to be rebels and do it this way, where we just measure and cut the strips at the same time. 
make sure you keep when you're like my fabric it's hard to tell what side is what so I'm making sure I organize them properly so that I that they're all laying properly on the table I'm not going to spend all the time measuring my hem the nice thing about bias tape is you just do one continuous strip and you just sew it sew it sew it and then once you kind of get to the end you just nip it off and tuck it under it's a little it's 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 supposed to be fast so it's a nice kind of fast application it's nice to keep bias tape around especially if you like custom sizes or whatever i always keep like black and certain colors of bias tape but i wanted to do this in the proper fabric or the the same fabric so you can't tell and that's why i would choose to do a bound hem rather than a double roll hem for this shirt but I absolutely love these quilting rulers if you don't have a quilting ruler and you're wanting to do design or your own pattern drafting definitely pick one of these up always better to have more so let's just keep cutting these back like let's just keep cutting these strips because you don't want to run out of bias tape when you're like halfway sewn something on it's the worst okay i think we're good on the strips i think i got enough strips make sure they're stacked properly and now we're gonna go sew these together when you're pressing your bias tape it's really stretchy so try not to pull on it that's the first pointer next you press your seams flat such as this all right and we're gonna trim off those corners after and I have a little bit of the spray starch here. So if like this fabric is a little um, tricky to press, so the, I find the spray starch helps to keep the seams nice and crisp, which will assist in my sewing. And also when I fold and press the bias tape together. And so we're just gonna continue on doing that and then I'll show you the little bias tape tool and how to use it. So. I've got my oh, my little bias tape feedy thing. I'm not really <laughs> sure what the technical name of it is. What I've done is I fed this through, okay, uh, like so. And you're gonna wanna trim off and clean up your edges before you do this. Basically all you do is pull it through like so and as you pull it out you just press it down you want to make sure those edges ha this is where you burn yourself so you can kind of do this pull it through a little bit you can see how nice that lines up with the one inch so one of these only work with one inch wide tape wider tapes you're gonna have to manually um, fold and press which I will show you to do in one second but you can see up nice and close all right <clears throat> I'm gonna show you the other technique of the manually folding okay so you don't have one of those machines or your bias tape is pretty wide what you're gonna do is but the trick is is you fold it together like so this is why the machine is so much easier pin in place and press down i know what you're thinking tedious right and yes it can be a little tedious i'm not gonna lie this is why bias tape comes in so many colors and thicknesses because no one wants to sit here and do this. That's why as you as you go down the bias tape, you move your pins along like this. Fun, right? It actually doesn't take as long as what you'd think. Yeah, super fun burning your hands doing it this way, but that's how you would do the bias tape otherwise if you didn't have the little machine. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine, ready to go. And 
make sure that you remember what side you did this on. Okay. So we're actually sewing the tape together like that and then pressing it out so it's one continuous. So what you want to do is you see how the corners, you have those two edges right that. Okay. So you want to line them up and you want to offset it slightly because you want to factor in the seam allowance, right? So go to about here. You see how I've offset that slightly for the corners and then I'm going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. There you have our first set there. Not bad, a little tricky to sew this fabric, but anyways, continue on like that and just keep sewing your continuous strips. I'm going to sew my binding onto the hem of my shirt. Got all this nice binding happening. Just gotta find the end and it's just gonna come from the, this side of my machine and I will sew this on. So what I'll do is I will start from about a quarter inch in and when I fold it up and in on itself like this, actually no, I'll sew it right to the edge. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna finish the edge. Sew it like that. Okay, so this is the inside and then all I'm gonna do is tuck this under and secure it like that. A nice, clean, delicious little edge that's finished. So let's just clean up this edge and we'll begin sewing. So we are starting with our bias tape. Now this is the inside of the garment and the bias tape is facing right side up. So as I sew, I'm opening it and I'm stitching it um, basically right sides together. And I did put starch on this, so the edge is really crisp. It's a little tricky to open. And this is the hem of my shirt I'm sewing this on too. And we're doing one quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is the edge of, I'm gonna follow just the edge of the presser foot here. Okay, now we're approaching a curve. So this is where the bias tape comes in handy. So it, what you can do is you can just give the bias tape a gentle little stretch, not stretching it out, but just stretching it a little bit to go around the seam. All right, everyone. So I got my bias tape attached and now we're going to pre uh, top stitch it down. So you can see it's got a nice, that's gonna be my finish and around my curve, it's gonna lay nice and flat through my curve. So I'm really excited about that. And that's just one application that you can use for bias taping. So, or bias taping, bias tape. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and you'll see other instructional videos. Some of them might even be containing bias tape applications. I'm gonna finish hemming this garment and when I'm done, I'll flash a picture at the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching.